the video for you. If you'll hand me that while I'll get it. Sorry. I feel like I'm in the way. So we basically, what you have is a banjo in the form of a guitar. So we're going to have the same tuning. This is just like a dobro. Now this is your first string. There's one, two, three, four, five. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And again, like a dobro, uh, you guys can collaborate on this one. You need to <laughs> remember something, right? So you're open, just like that is G. If you Use your finger as a bar. Now I'm I'm gonna recommend you get a strap because it's hard to hold these things and not you know you're trying to not only hold it up so it doesn't fall out of your lap and then you're trying to play it as well. So these straps are like ten dollars, okay. pretty cheap. If you follow the same thing as a dobro with your finger as the bar and the two two one thingy that we've talked about with your mom. So you go up from zero, then two frets. Okay, so it's not the first one, but the second one? Right. You gotta so press down it. all the way across. Okay, take your take your thumb and put it on the back. There you go. You gotta press uh, all across the neck with your fingers. There you go. So you have to actually put some weight on it. Yeah. Okay. So there, there's two. Now come up two more. This one. Well, let's back up just a second. So this is G. The open one is G. Two frets up is A. Okay. Or my next one. My next one. And this one. That would be B. You gotta get all those strings. Uh, try not to hit this one right now. We're not gonna use the fifth string right now. This one? No, the very top one. This one that's attached to this or? Yeah, the fifth string. Okay. Don't, try not to hit oh, that one. Oh, don't hit it. Okay, when I'm strong. One, two, thumb back behind the neck so you have something to press with. Put some pressure on there. I feel weird. Like I feel like I'm going to hit this string no matter what it's doing. Yeah. I don't know. Well, so your mom is learning the same thing, right? The 2-2-1. Two, two, so you got 0, 2, So that gives you the, you know, the alphabet, the musical alphabet is A through G. Well, we start with G on this instrument. So it's G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right, and that's a, the, by the number of frets, right? Two, two more, one, Two, two, one, two. Yeah, you gotta put your thumb back here so you have something to press with. You will see people press it um, like this, or, you know, thumb up here. But, and, and when you do that, you're using your palm to press with. But, People start doing that after they learn the right way to do it because they get lazy. Right? So the right way to learn it is with your thumb. Use your thumb. I know, I keep hitting this one and it's... That's right. I mean, you're not going to get it the very first time, right? It's...
It's a learning to play a guitar or any stringed instrument is a little bit painful at first because your fingers have to build up some calluses. And a lot of women don't want to do that because they think it's going to make their hand look really ugly. And it will if you don't take care of it. But see, if you look at my fingers, they look pretty normal. But I guarantee you, man, I've got some thick calluses built up. But what you have to do is just like any skin care, you know, when all that dead skin as your calluses build up, you know, take it off. <laughs> yeah. And just keep them, uh, you know, so they, they look like fingers instead of this nasty, you know, skin falling off. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but every stringed instrument is like that. You're going to have to build up some calluses on your fingers. And it's a little bit painful, frankly, to uh, when you first start. You couldn't use a bar on that like you could the dobro, could you? I no, the strings aren't high enough. Yeah, so don't uh, don't get to where it hurts so much you can't do it. If you have to quit after five minutes, then that's fine. It takes in the rare instances where I don't play guitar for a while. It usually takes me a couple of weeks to go back and, and build up my calluses where it doesn't hurt. Which is why I try to play every day at least a few minutes so I don't lose these anymore. Because it is painful. When you start playing again and, and pushing on those strings, it can be painful. Okay, so uh, let me just back up. The... Good. You got plenty of pressure on there. You got your finger down straight. <laughs> it gets better. I promise you. So this is the this is what you want to do, like a clamp, thumb, and this first finger. Okay. So and the reason I'm saying that use this finger is because after you you're going to need these other fingers for doing you know, this chords other chords and stuff you know, that kind of stuff and even up here so this finger is really kind of a, a, a I don't know what you call it Without that, you lose a lot. <clears throat> so if you just practice this and get, you know, get to where it doesn't hurt. <laughs> And if you want to play along with your mom, you know, she already knows the frets. And they're the same on this instrument as on a dobro. So you got the G, C on the fifth fret, the D on seven, A on two, 
and then that E minor with one little difference. It's two notes here. So it's uh, fourth string, put your thumb behind, fourth string on, with your middle finger on the second fret, and then your ring finger, first string, second fret. And you got it. So you need to get your wrist down here, bend your wrist a little. There you go. Because you got to clear all these strings, get your hand bent. And this is where your strap will help you because you can turn. Loosen up here a little bit. You'll be able to turn the you instrument. Need to get your there. <laughs> Try to see the curve here? Mm -hmm. Let that part rest on your leg. There you go. There you go. Now the strap will hold it here. Yeah. I'll hold it here for you right now. Pull the neck up. Neck up. Here. neck up. Now you should have a little easier time. Get your thumb behind and your wrist bent down. There you go. Should be a little easier. There you go. That's an E minor on the banjo. So the strap, when you get it, will help you keep this in this position. Okay. You just need to remember to keep this back here and your wrist bent a little. Okay. So and like I said, you see, even me, I do it. You know, I learned it this way. But you get lazy after a while. Your fingers build strength. And, and you just start doing that. But this is the proper way to do it, to learn it. So, when I put a strap on, what do I attach it to? Okay, okay. there's a button right here. So that button. And there should okay. be one back. Just yeah. Okay. okay. So they just, well, banjo's different. Because I was looking at hers, and hers attaches at the end, and that's why I was wondering. Yeah, it's, Dar Darbo's a little bit different. Okay. So this is more like a guitar, so if you look at... Uh, one of my guitars, they're set up the same way for a strap. So they attach you on the body and not on the fret. Um, yeah, there's a the pen back here, and then there's this one up here. And then when you put it on, you adjust it, right, so that it's, uh, when I sit down and play my guitar, right, this is where I'll have it. The little curve here, that's where it rests on my leg. And you see how it's really almost perpendicular to my body? Mm -hmm. Straight. It's not like this. That's hard to play like that. Yeah. It's straight up and down like that. So I'm looking down vertically on the strings. And this is hard to do without a strap. So if you make your E minor chord, this is what it should sound like. So if you go back to the open, that's your G chord. And then the second, the second fret is A. Come up two more to the B. Two more frets. All the way up. There you go. Yeah, it's it's hard without a strap. Um, so this one? Mm hmm And then thumb here, which is difficult because it's at a weird angle. Yeah, because your guitar is not in the right position. There you go. And normally you want this up here, right? Which uh, the strap would hold. More difficult. <laughs> well you, you see the strap see how this is now? Yeah. It, the strap will hold it in the right position. I'm <laughs> just like vertical trying to hold on to stuff. Would that be hard to find? A strap? Oh no, they're cheap. Um, I mean this... It's, I know my thumb is wrong because I'm... Yeah, that's right. This strap right here was like $10. Um, 
I think I even got this one hollow. And then this one. Is that where we need to go? Well, please they're not make, open anymore. Please don't make me go to Holloway's again. That was weird as could be. Um, it was weird because we had to stand outside and we felt like kind of scared. Uh, the, yeah, she saw the little sign that said, ring the bell. Yeah, yeah we, we rang that we bell. bell. We rang it and then we called him and he was like, did you ring the bell? And we're like, yes, and he didn't hear it. <laughs> here, try this strap while you're here. It'll make it easier for you. That would be a lot better. Let me just adjust it. So you're going to put your arm through there. So, bring this up. You might have to. Like, when, you you might have to bring this leg up, and so you don't have a thing. Try this chair. So, if you see a classical Sorry. classical classical guitarist, like you know that does all that finger pick stuff, mm -hmm. you'll. A lot of times you'll see that they have a little foot thing that they put their foot on to raise their leg up, right? To hold that guitar up here in the, the right position. Mm -hmm. It's not that common, but I have seen them. It'd probably be more helpful if I wasn't like four foot eleven. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that should help you a little bit with a strap like that. Yeah. You don't have to try to keep it like this. Yeah. So those, the first and second string, you're not getting enough pressure on those. And again, that's not a natural position for your finger. You, you really have to, to learn for it to bend that way just by practicing that. Here, right? That's all. You've got your fingers fine. It's you're just not getting it flat, and that's just something you have to practice that and learn, right? So I can press here and, and do it. It's, just, it's, it's, it's I know. Is it possible it's, that my fingers are just really soft? And well, that's yeah, that's what I was saying. You're gonna have to build up a little bit of calluses, and it, and it does. It's a little bit painful, frankly, if you, until you do that. And the only way you can do that is just playing. Yeah. And you don't have to do it overnight. It takes a few weeks. Okay, so well, this one on the other fret is <clears throat> this one and... Just, just remember 221, right? That that puts you in the right position. 221, 221. 221, 221. Same as the dobro. So flat. Okay, you'll get it. 
So I'll, I'll show you one more chord before you're done because it's about as all. You're going to have to work on this part. Okay. I know this is wrong, but I. Well, yeah. I know it's wrong, but it's the only way I can do it right now. <laughs> so squishy. I know it's them round, but two, two, one, then. Well, so you can do it, you can do it a different way, all right, and you can learn both of these ways, because eventually you want to know them both anyhow, but you can do it like this, you know, just use all four fingers, but that, that for me is cumbersome. Or maybe get, you know, like that. Too, or get as many as you can and then get the others with you know two other fingers, whatever ones work. It's, I know it's silly, it's not quite right. Two, two, one, then two. Can you get these two and then these two here, maybe with one finger? This is what I was, I was doing with uh, two and two. Okay, well that works. I mean, oops, not enough pressure. It was working. do that I mean but don't stop practicing this because you're going to need that in the future okay. Okay. so you I showed you the E minor go ahead and remember that second fret there you go this one? And I'll use this finger middle finger uh, ring finger You know the you know where the position is, right? Yes. Now, if you add this finger here on the right here, third string, third string, one, two, three. So up here you do wait. Right there. So this one on the first fret, and then this one, and then there you go. This one. That gives you a C chord, right? So you go from E minor, here, to a C with that one finger. Time for you to build up calluses, but it does get better. 
Because it's like, I have intentions. Yeah. Um, like I said, I've had my, I try to keep mine, play just every day, even if it's just five minutes on a guitar. So how much should I practice every day? As much as you can. Okay. I mean, the more you practice, the better you're going to get, and the faster you're going to get there. So. How much should I hurt myself in a day? <laughs> well, that, I can't answer that for you. Okay? <laughs> I can tell you that most people, if they spend 10, 15 minutes a day, right, they make really good progress. And you'll build up your calluses. And, and frankly, I mean, when I lose mine, that's what I do. I'll play just you know, 5, 10 minutes a day, every day, until it stops hurting. And now I just play it just so that I don't lose them. Because they, if you quit playing for a week, they'll go away. They'll go away, and you have to. You're not really starting from scratch again, but you're going to have to go through a week of pain to get them back. <laughs> so, for me, I just say, okay, well, you know what? I'll just play on my guitar for five minutes every day. You know, just sing a couple songs, and I'm done. Um, and that keeps my calluses from going away. So once you get them, you really want to try to do what you can to maintain them. Will this work better if I shorten my nails because I have long nails? I just, I just haven't cut them in a bit. But. Well, it, it will. It is easier. I mean, a lot of women play with nails, but it is more difficult because you have to bend your finger. You know, you, you're bending in unnatural ways to begin with, but now you're trying to bend even more because your nails getting in the way. So I know a lot of women will cut their nails when they're learning, but then once they learn it and they're comfortable, they'll let them grow out some. Okay. So. And do these okay? Do these have a length, or do is it just all of them work the same? Like. Well, they yeah, they're adjustable, okay. right? So on the back, um, that's what this does, right? Okay. You can shorten it or lengthen it by pulling this through the little latch, there, and they all come with this. Okay, so they're all pretty much the same. They'll fit whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean those straps there. I mean. The, this one's a little different, but it's, you know, it's, it's, I don't even know if it's not real leather, but the way you adjust this one is looping it through these little holes instead of sliding. But they're all adjustable, and, they're, you know, they're, they're relatively inexpensive like that. One, that one that you're wearing right now, I think, was like $10, and I got it at Holloway's. I could probably just grab one with two-day shipping off Amazon. Yeah, yeah, I mean... It doesn't matter. Uh, you can buy straps that are like sixty or a hundred dollars, but why? I mean, unless you want your name written on it or whatever. You know. <laughs> they don't, they serve the same purpose. But, yeah. Um, but with practice, will this fit? Like, okay, with me, like. Well, what will happen is that you'll you'll eventually figure out the way to hold it that works best for you. So for me and for a lot of players, um, now I was classically trained, right? So I had to learn. Oh, it's over there. But like my instructors, right? I had to learn everything: the footstool up here, right, so that your guitar rests in the proper position, and your thumb back here. But then, you know, this is the stuff I was learning that. The second half of it. I can't do it without the music. But it, well, here's one that is from 14th century lute music that was transposed to guitar. I play this one all the time because I've adapted it to the in introduction of a bluegrass song. And it's called Few. Um, 
can't even remember the name of it. But... Um, I use that in intro to, um, you, do you know um, Angelina Baker, have you ever heard that song? I don't know any bluegrass at all. Well, it's not a bluegrass song, it's actually an old Irish song. Okay. Old Irish song, it's, it goes like this. I use that um, little classical piece as an intro to it, and then it goes that... Uh, That's, this is the way I had to learn, you know, the proper technique or you get the ruler on the knuckles <laughs> business. But it paid off in the end, so. <laughs> so, yeah, a strap, and you you can borrow that one until you get one, because I've got plenty of straps, and they're, they're cheap. I mean, Amazon, you can probably get it less than $10. But that I keep borrowing all of your stuff. That's all right. I know where you live. <laughs> you just come get me. Sick dad on me. I'll stick my ankle biting dog on it. <laughs> so I'll grab one at Amazon and I just. Uh, now, if you measure that case that Jane Stobler was in, they can tell you what size case it is because I don't know the names of them. Like, I know that these guitars are. Um, Grand Auditorium is what they call that body store style. But. Those are a little bit smaller, and you can see how much smaller that is compared to this. It, like, I sat this on top of her Dobro, or like the case, not the actual Dobro. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not totally stupid. <laughs> but the size difference is crazy. Yeah, right. So they can, if you, um, and actually, if you're going to buy a case on the internet, I recommend you go, it'll be a little more expensive, right? Amazon is the cheapest place on the planet. Yeah. But there's no one there that can help you size things. I know. Yeah. yeah. So if you go to Sweetwater.com, I buy everything from them except for strings. I used to get them locally at Holloway's, but now I'm gonna have to get them somewhere else. I wish they weren't closing. Like the guy that was there was super nice. Well, was was an older guy. Older guy, yeah. Yeah, that's Marion uh, Holloway. He's the owner. He was had red hair. Yeah, and, and like really red. green eyes that like. Yeah. But anyhow, um, Sweetwater.com is where I buy everything from, and they get, you get your own sales guy, right? Anytime you ever deal with them, you always deal with the same person. So it's really nice, because they know you, you know them. The one or two times I've ever had to have an issue where something didn't get here, you know, it was broke or whatever, I mean, they just said, all right, um, I'm going to send you a new one and a prepaid package, uh, you know, shipping label, as soon as you get the new one, pack the other one up and send it. I mean, no questions, you know, they're really, really good. They're going to be a little more expensive than Amazon, but it's worth it from, from my perspective to have the service. They, t they really take care of you. He so. gave us a little thing with a, um, a veil or something. It was a, he, he told us about a, a 